Hey guys, how's it going? So I'm standing outside the front of our house by our nice hedge of Atlas roses that we planted a couple of years ago. It's time to get them cleaned up and cut back, ready for the season. It's something that we do usually sometime late winter, early spring. I can already see buds on these plants uh, and we are past the point of a really deep freeze. So I think it's a great time to do this and it's really an easy thing to do. So I thought I would run you guys through the steps I take. Before I take after any major cleanup in terms of leaves or weak stems, I want to do an overall kind of cut back and usually you can cut them back by about a third to a half of the entire plant. The Atlas roses naturally stay on the smaller side so they're easy to maintain. Um, so we've got you know kind of an average height of about right here on this whole hedge. So I want to take them back by about this far. We don't need to worry about cutting at a slant or cutting above a bud or whatever. We're just going to go in uh, simply cut back the main part of the upper canopy of the rose, which will open them up and then we can see what else we have going on. So if we kind of take our pruners in here, we're gonna come in and cut back right about here. And then our first cut will be our guide as to how much we'll cut the other ones off. So we're just gonna kind of willy nilly this thing. And so that really eliminates a lot of the leaf canopy. So we won't have to worry about cleaning that up later. So you can see where I've made my first cuts. Those will kind of be my guide for the rest of the hedge. So let's get this first step done and then we'll move on to the next step. Doesn't that make them look so much better? It's like a good spring cleaning. And the next step will make them look even better. So we're gonna go in and we are gonna look for any dead or weak branches. And also at the same time, um, we're gonna look for anything that's kind of like making the center of the shrub very thick because roses like to have a lot of good air circulation and like to be able to kind of move through the plant to keep them healthy. So if you take a look right down at the base of this shrub, you can see like this one right here, there's not a whole lot of dead going on, but this one right here is not looking so great. So we're gonna remove anything that looks like that right there. There's another one right here on the interior. It's not looking so great. And that one's also kind of making the center too thick. See that right there. And then we're gonna remove any weak branches like this. What we wanna do is we wanna be left with stronger, more hardy looking stems. So we're gonna go ahead and take care of this. And in doing so, that will take care of a lot of the leaves that are still left over inside this plant. Might be able to hear all the thorns on my gloves and my coat. Make sure to protect yourself when you're working with roses. See how this one's competed, competing right here? We've got kind of some weaker stems and then this really strong one. So I'm gonna just get rid of this one completely. Right there. Looks good. So you can see by removing all of those weak branches and anything that was competing, we just opened up the center of this plant really nicely. Um, and then I've got to remove still a little bit of leaves at the base and this will help with um, removing any overwintering insects that might be around. And then also it will help with any kind of diseases that you might deal with on your plants. So basically I'm gonna do this exact same thing with the rest of these roses and then we'll take a look. So while I was at it, I went and got some rose tone out of the barn um, because we're having such a, a warm up uh, and it looks like it's going to stay that way. I'm going to go ahead and fertilize these now. It's a great time when you start seeing some growth on the plants and I'm using rose tone. I'm going to go ahead and use the rose tone on the hydrangea because it is for like flower, uh, woody shrub kind of plants as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and put it on the nine barks too, because I could go get plant tone for it, but rose tone will work great. So just don't worry too much about like having specific kinds of fertilizers for specific plants. I mean, definitely if that's something you want to do, go for it. Um, but 
this will work great for everything. So let me do that really quick. So one and a quarter cup around the drip line of the plant, approximately. I'm not gonna measure. My bulbs will probably love it too. And the drip line of the plant is kind of like the outer ring where the leaf canopy ends. It doesn't have to be right up by the root ball. I'm just gonna lightly scratch that fertilizer in and we should get a little bit more spring rain that will help kind of push it down into the root zone of the plant. You can see we have drip tubing in this bed. So we have very efficient watering so it's not wasting a bunch of water. Um, so that's the thing if you've got drip and you don't get a ton of rain, you might think about dragging a hose out and kind of helping push the fertilizer down a bit. But I think we're early enough yet to where we'll have rain that will do that job for us. Also on the flip side, if you're uh, fertilizing too early or um, and or getting a ton more rain than we do here, uh, it can kind of run off a little bit. You do risk losing some of the food. Um, so you do wanna make sure that you do see some activity in your plants before you go out and start fertilizing. Like, the buds on the hydrangeas are starting to swell. You can see little red uh, buds all over the roses. So this is kind of prime time because they're starting to pick up and grow. So they'll actually start to utilize these nutrients as those nutrients uh, get around the roots of the plant. Things are looking pretty good in this flower bed. And really the only things we have left to do are just to test the drip system out. I did notice that we've got one tube that's cut over there. So I wanna address that uh, and fix that before we mulch over the top. So that'll be the very last step is to put a nice layer of mulch down that will cover the irrigation tubes. It will um, help keep moisture and it'll help suppress weeds and it makes everything look really, really pretty. The last thing I do wanna show you in this video though, because I just kinda of wanted to focus on rose pruning and I do have a lot of roses to prune in my garden, but I've got one or two wild overgrown mangy looking roses that I think if you guys have something like this in your garden, I'm hoping it gives you the confidence to tackle it because they can be a little bit intimidating when you see these <laughs> big unruly thing. So let's head to one of those. All right guys, so this is the big wild mangy rose. It gets huge every single year. Aaron thinks we should remove it, but I think it's the most beautiful rose. We might end up at some point, but um, it's really old. It's got a huge trunk at the bottom and it's got the most delicate pink fragrant blooms that you'll ever see. They're just so gorgeous. So I just can't bear the thought of uh, losing this rose. So when you have one this big and you're trying to tame the growth, I might take it down a little bit more than half. It'll be half or a tiny bit lower than that because to keep the growth in check, you just have to do that. Um, so what I'll do is take the top part off first and then we'll just do the same steps. I uh, will take the top part off. All of a sudden it'll seem a lot more manageable. And then we'll go in and just leave the strongest canes. We'll get rid of stuff that's crossing and we'll get rid of all the leaves. So here we go. Hey, look what I'm doing. I'm printing a rose back. Remember how big this was? That was all connected to it. All of that. It was so tall. It was taller than me. Cool, huh? Okay, so the top half or a little bit more has been removed. It looks a lot more manageable now. Uh, so now I'm gonna go through and I'll remove any dead branches and anything that looks really weak. So we're gonna get rid of like this little puny. Uh oh, you okay, bud? We're gonna get rid of this puny growth right here. We wanna be left with nice, strong stalks to start the season. So here we go. <laughs> Benjamin's kicking snow at Aaron. Oh, I got you. Thanks, bud. I, I, I was worried there for myself. How's that in terms of transformative, Erin? Amazing. So that one is done. Looks a lot better, doesn't it? It will still want to grow pretty tall this year. Pretty good size shrub. Um, but it never needs support. It never looks like, because I thought for a little while there that it might be a climber, but it doesn't really grow. It doesn't have the same growth habit as a climber. Like it doesn't shoot out 
long canes. It stays like it grows kind of um, bushy and stays all kind of comp not compact, but it's just like a larger version of a landscape shrub rose, I guess. So anyway, spring pruning of your roses is really easy to do. Just, you know, top them and then clean out any dead or weak branches, kind of open them up in the center so that air and light can penetrate and um, fertilize if the timing's right. If you've uh, hit it at a time where it's not too early, um, go ahead and spread some fertilizer around the base and your plants should be really happy for the remainder of the season. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye.